We are in Sydney, Paddington to be exact, and I have the illustrious <laughs> Tony Bonner with me, an iconic Australian actor, director, and teacher. Thank you. So lucky to have you here with us. Well, it's great to be here yeah. with you. Oh, yes, so. I was born and bred in uh, God's country in Manly, <laughs> uh, in Fairlight to be uh, specific. Um, yeah, uh, I, I, I kind of live by the water, or I try to wherever I am. Uh, in Los Angeles, I live at Pacific Palisades, which is on the obviously on the Pacific Ocean, just near Santa Monica. Uh, in Spain, I live near the ocean. In, in Turkey, the same. So I uh, I just have an affinity and a love and a desire for salt water and the ocean. Uh, now, my father uh, was a leading actor with uh, J. C. Williamson's, with the wonderful theatrical company um, that did all the major musicals from the turn of the century through until probably the 80, uh, 1980s or 90s, uh, when they amalgamated with another company. Um, uh, my father was a leading baritone uh, singer, actor, uh, with uh, uh, all those great musicals. Um, so I kind of grew up in a house uh, hearing my mother, who was a wonderful pianist and soprano, um, and my father with that uh, baritone, sometimes bass baritone voice, uh, and lots of well-known actors of that period. Of the, uh, my first job was a window dresser, uh, and I learned about space, and I learned about um, creating something from an empty space, this uh, empty window, and think, now, how am I going to fill this? And it's a bit the same with an actor. You, you, you're given a script, uh, and you then try and fill those black and white words on that page you try to bring them to life. And so with discussion, obviously with the director and your fellow actors, uh, the research or the knowledge you have about the character that you have been asked to play, uh, you put all that into the mix and you hope uh, when the editor's finished with the film, uh, all the dubbing music has been attached, that there's going to be a rewarding journey up there on that screen. Well, I think it's all about invoking imagination. You hit the you nail bet. on the head when you, you said bet. that. You're trying to there was no films really uh, of any great uh, bulk being made back in the 30s, 40s and 50s. Some fabulous films, there's no mm. question. Uh, Jeddah is still one of my uh, all-time favourite films. It's a beautiful mm. film. Um, but no, no, no. It was, uh, I'd done a role uh, in a film here that went to America and uh, got pretty good reviews. The character I played... Um, got some nice reviews. It was suggested in a few columns in America. Uh, is this guy from Australia possibly uh, <laughs> another Clint Eastwood? Oh. Um, so those little bits helped. A, a manager in Los Angeles contacted me and said, uh, are you coming to America? Are you interested in coming to America? Uh, and so it went from there. Really. That's fantastic. Um, uh, the budget on a film is important and can be important, obviously. Um, but it's not. It's about the script. Uninteresting. So it all revolves around the ability and talents of the screenwriter um, to bring something in those hundred pages of script that a director is interested in directing. A producer thinks he can raise the budget to do it, and actors of interest uh, read a character and think. I'd love to play this. Yeah, exactly. But that's how, that's the marriage. That's how it all gets together. So, did you so the theatre was uh, uh, probably a little more active and alive than it is today, uh, because again, uh, uh, television, video, DVDs, in a sense, uh, destroyed uh, live theatre mm -hmm. to a degree. Um, but yeah, theatre was great in Sydney. There were some wonderful theatres. Some of them were tragically pulled down mm -hmm. by developers. Um, the, the wonderful old uh, Her Majesty's Theatre uh, in, in Haymarket uh, came down, the Tivoli came down, um, some beautiful old theatres uh, came down in that lust for putting up uh, apartments and, uh, and businesses. So there was no technology really, well not much, there was cameras and stuff but not really much post-production or perhaps how did some of the camera tricks and film magic happen back in the day? Well, they didn't. I was talking to a DOP, <laughs> a director of photography, a friend of mine the other day, that I'm kind of old school. I like the, 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 the effects to happen on set, right. not to be post done in the post-production with okay. CGI 
uh, or computer effects that uh, we may sit here and a, a scene's going to play and down here bullet hits are going to hit. Um, so, but they, these days that won't happen until post-production. Exactly. So you and I will play the scene uh, playing that, that's happening there. Um, I, I like them happening on a set. You know, I like the reality. I, I like them happening on a set. You know, I like the reality of the 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 action to be with the actor in the scene. Um, it's uh, it's very difficult sometimes to be in a white room filming with the director saying to you, "Now see that little spot over there? That's where the spear is going to be coming from, and that little spot there is when this is." So on action, I want you to take three beats, see the spear. Dodge the spear, see what's coming there, dodge that. Um, so you're creating, uh, which is a, an art in itself, you're creating something that's absolutely not happening uh, and you won't see, the actor won't see until they actually see the film, the completed film. All this will happen in post-production.